Hey everybody, so what's going on with Facebook? Everybody's favorite social network. So why is Facebook losing its younger demographic? And what is Facebook's problem in the medium and long term? So I believe it comes down to a simple fact that Facebook has no moat, as Warren Buffett would talk about. So what do we mean by moat? I'm talking about some sort of barrier to entry, some sort of neat, unique quality that Facebook has as a defense against encroaching competition. Now the problem is they don't have anything because Facebook's product is the user base. As soon as the user base is uninspired to use Facebook, that's it, the jig is up, the jig is up. So you need to create an environment within your social network that's enticing, that's inviting, that has personality, different. Problem is now is that Facebook's brand has really been tarnished quite a bit recently by uh, things like censoring right-wing uh, point of view. Uh, it basically ticked off half their audience but they were kind of between a rock and a hard place because if they didn't censor the right wing, then the left wing would get pissed off. And oh my God, you know. So they were trying to thread that needle. Difficult task. So I'm not actually casting aspersions on Facebook. I'm trying to look at this as dispassionately as possible. So when I look at it, again, their major problem is that they don't have any thing unique about their product, anything that's not, uh, that's hard to reproduce. Uh, for example, you can buy clones of Facebook, at least their basic functionality, uh, for 500 bucks, you know, it's been around for years in terms, in terms of the software. Again, Facebook's value is its community, but if a community is sour, and if the, if the community is, uh, has a bad feeling about Facebook, and I'm not saying that's the case, but I think it's growing a little bit more sour uh, as time goes by. Then it has a problem. My best guess in terms of how Facebook would solve their problems is that they have to bring in some very smart uh, behavioral psychologist to, uh, to work with a crack team of UI and UX experts to uh, change the perceived emotional relationship vis-a-vis -vis Facebook. They gotta create a better mood out of it. Now, it's easier said than done. You can improve on that. Because if you look at Facebook's UI, it's, it's kind of corporate, right? It looks more like corporate look to it. It's uninspiring, graphically speaking, right? If you look at Instagram, it's kind of fun. Uh, I guess TikTok is kind of fun. Uh, but Facebook is meh, it's fine, it's functional, but it's more corporate looking. That's the feeling at least I get from it anyhow. And it's not the clearest as well. There could be some major work done in terms of UI, UX, to make it more fun, to make it more inviting. That said, uh, it has larger issues in terms of just demographic switches. Um, Social networks are infamous for their, uh, for this fickleness of the client base. Again, Facebook's value really is the people who visit the, client, the site. That's it, that's the value, the people. It's not like YouTube, where the value of YouTube is, is a lot of it is the content being produced. Uh, content production on Facebook is um, not uh, as, uh, easy, I would imagine, is not as a fair, I would even argue, as it is on YouTube. For example, with YouTube, when I post content, uh, my audience and a huge audience can get access to my content without me having to pay YouTube to get access. With Facebook uh, content production, when I put out content that gets a lot of eyeballs, YouTube actually pays me. It actually pays me. So this incentivizes me and other creators to put more work into producing higher quality content. Because don't fool you, putting out all these videos and stuff, it takes time. It takes time, it takes effort. You gotta learn the craft. 
you got to buy equipment. It's, uh, it's, a big, it's a big amount of work. So I'm not incentivized to do anything on Facebook because I know that Facebook will cut off access to my audience uh, at a moment's notice. Um, that's not cool, unless I pay. Um, and they're profiting from the content that I put on there, but they're not sharing in any, any of that profit. And I'm not a communist or anything. I'm, you know, I'm a capitalist. But there's got to be a, re a little bit of reciprocity here, you know. Anyhow, so uh, back to the, I think Facebook's got some um, large problems that are psychological more than anything else. It's perceptual in terms of how people perceive them. So uh, there's a lot to be done. But again, from a software developer's perspective and a graphic designer's perspective, first thing I'd be doing is looking at UI and UX, trying to f fun it up, if you will, F-U-N, it up a little. And there you go. But uh, it's a daunting task, to say the least. And again, I am not casting aspersions on Facebook. I really think that they're, um, they're caught between a rock and a hard place. They're getting a lot of political pressure from all kinds of different countries around the world. Uh, just like the NBA, the NBA in Hollywood is bowing to Chinese uh, Communist Party pressure. If you want to sell in our market, you got to adhere to our uh, perceived ethics and morals, not your own. Um, so it's hard to be critical of the NBA or Facebook for doing this and other, com com and other companies when here in North America, people expect these companies to adhere to their personal uh, sense of morals and ethics as well, right? So you have to understand that the uh, moral code of ethics that you may have is a double-edged sword. So if you're going to impose it on Facebook here, you have to expect them to bow to it being imposed upon them. In other countries where you may disagree with the moral attitudes of said forward nations. So there you go. That's what Uncle Steph thinks about that.